Uh, today we decided that uh, we are going to uh, actually set a conversation uh, with a uh, young lady that's appearing uh, yes, here. Uh, Jomuda is a media personality, producer, and director based in the US. She is an author and filmmaker and a media entrepreneur. Um, and she's a beacon of empowerment and innovation within the media space. How are you doing this afternoon, Vuyo? Hi, Bridget. I'd say good morning from New York. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. Good morning. <laughs> and thank you for taking our call. Much appreciated. At least it's not a rough start. Um, a great start yeah, of my morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not too bad. Um, let, let's, uh, let's talk about your story you are a media personality producer and director um, but you, you you also just have a very intentional focus about the responsibility that comes uh, with those particular titles and platforms yeah i mean i absolutely love what it is that i do because i've of, of how much i've grasped the as you said the intentionality um and the power that media gets to hold in society not only in south africa but around the world um, from a very young age, I was very cognizant of this responsibility and how much change I can create around the world by utilizing this, this medium and this platform. So, you know, starting off at, um, in, in South Africa, having to work around different spaces and places that are in the media industry um, mm. and studying it at UCT at the University of Cape Town, um, film and television studies, media and writing. Um, to further kind of extend that desire and that love for the industry that I've had. Um, growing up as the only child, as a little girl, Kualanga, in, in Cape Town, um, I fell in love with television. I fell in love with, with just being in front of the screen, right? And, and seeing the possibilities of what media could do and, and what television and film could create. And I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to be part of a, an industry that, that, has, um, that can be a beacon of hope, that can give and share inspiration. And from my circumstances, you know, growing up in, in dire and extreme poverty in, in Cape Town, um, I wanted to change the narrative and I wanted to change my story by creating stories, if that even makes sense. Like, I just, I just wanted to be part of that. So, um, it, which led me to this path. And I, it's been an incredible past couple of years of me engraving myself in the industry and, and learning as much as I possibly can to then forth go out into the world and um, continue sharing my voice, the voice of South Africa to the rest of the world as well. Mm. And what a, a dynamic space uh, to be doing that, uh, you know, in New York City. Um, and I love the, 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 the sort of the focus as well, the deliberate focus on on using media as a tool of changing narratives, uh, and, and particularly so in the context of telling African stories. Yes, yes. And I recently was speaking at the United Nations quite recently exactly about this, 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 as you know what you're saying about story and African stories being amplified. I think this is a beautiful time in history where we are seeing a desire for the rest of the world to hear what Africa has to say, to hear what African women have to say, to hear what women of color have to say. And I find myself in a very beautiful space and, and uh, at a privileged space really to, to be able to be given the opportunity to not only be in spaces like New York, but to advocate for myself and for those who are like me, who are from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it definitely and and for me that deliberate that deliberate um, you know intentionality comes from me understanding that it's time it's a, it's time mm. just in history in general it's time for us to tell African stories because the world wants to hear African stories um, and 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 that that in itself um, kind of en enforces me to 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 take that responsibility um, quite you know and and have and be responsible about it as as I'm kind of setting off into the rest of the world with African stories because um, we have so much mm -hmm. beauty in us you know we are a beautiful nation a beautiful people a beautiful continent and I think that you know the world needs to see and hear all about that you know absolutely uh, and and in fact a before we get into uh, some of uh, the uh, sort of initiatives that you're driving, like uh, Young, Bold and Black, and I want to find out all about that, just uh, a matter of uh, a few weeks ago, you, you got to speak at the uh, prestigious Columbia University. Firstly, are you are you an alumni at Columbia by any no, chance? No, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> I'm a UCT alumni of note. So, um. <laughs> well, you know, I've known a lot of uh, South African, um, you know, um, sort of graduates who then, especially those who focus in media yes. um, who tend to then go over and do a 
postgrad in Colombia at, at Columbia University because they do have quite the robust media um, curriculum, I'm told. Yes. So h- how, uh, how uh, rather, let me put it this way, what brought you to this conversation? Um, and you were on a panel of speakers uh, at Columbia U, and this was hosted by Columbia University African Development Group. That's right, that's right. A big part of that conversation and how I was kind of invited in was because of the work that I get to do from from a global perspective of media, right? And um, my voice was required at Columbia University as a South African, African born and African bred and ignited storyteller. And, you know, I was speaking in front of of Columbia University students who are from various different, um, you know, faculties within the school. But all of those students and those lecturers wanted to hear where is the future of African storytelling going and where where are we currently right now? And I was, you know, very, very, very much privileged to have even received the invitation and the honor to come through to to Columbia University, a school and an institution that I've, I've kind of looked at you know, for years and admired. So to be able to be brought forward and and to be invited to it, to speak and to share really, you know, where are we going? What does AI look like in the African media Mm -hmm. space? What does um, storytelling look like? And how do we continue to amplify African voices? So that was my position in that panel. Um, I had an incredible time and the reception was great. It was absolutely amazing. (laughs) I mean, no doubt, uh, no doubt. We are definitely, you can hear for yourself, uh, she's definitely a young, dynamic powerhouse and representing us well. Um, Let's talk about Young Bold Black, which is a movement you founded back in 2018. Yeah. It's been it's been a very beautiful journey with Young Bold and Black. Um, And and what really, you know, that desire, that burning desire came from me wanting to, to see young people, young, bold and black people who are going out to advocate and to work hard in their respective industries and bring them together in a collective um, and and have storytelling be embedded within that, where we are telling a story Mm. of a young man who is from the township of Ekailicha who goes off to study abroad in the UK and comes back and is an esteemed lawyer in the country. You know, a a young man from a a different part of uh, KZN who has gone Mm. on to, to... study and 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 improve their life and improve their family and we've had over a hundred of young people who've been who've been kind of been part of this movement of the young bold and black community all within formable stories that that um are of hope of inspiration of ignition so that we can then start creating um you know a, a a level of excellence that is that is celebrated. I, I, I always feel and believe that we need to celebrate black excellence because it gives a, that pat on the shoulder to someone who's doing well and doing great in the respective industries can help them move the needle forward so that we can continue striving for the best. I think we are a, an incredible continent and, and even the premise of the awards was for the African continent, for young people across the continent. Um, sometimes I feel like we don't celebrate ourselves enough. We don't, um, mm. you know, admire ourselves enough. And and that platform in, in its own is to say you're doing well. You know, we see you and we celebrate you now. Let's create a community where we are all uplifting each other um, in our respective industries. And it's been absolutely amazing. People's lives and careers have been changed through the Young Bold and Black platform in an incredible way. And I'm so honored to to have started and founded that platform. Um, and you know, continue to tell stories, continue to to enable people to um, you know to feel proud of the work that they are doing, and to then further escalate mm. to to greater and, and bigger heights. And that's what that's my my mission, even within the media space as well, is to say how are we bringing hope back into society? How are we bringing inspiration back into society by telling valuable, meaningful stories that can help change someone's life? And one step at a time, you know, um, one platform at a time, one one solution at a time is, is how I am approaching it. And Young, Bold and Black is one of those solutions. Yeah, we are, I mean, it's uh, been such a uh, privilege getting to know you a little bit better today. Uh, we wish you the very best of luck as you continue to build uh, your voice within this space and, of course, to advocate for African creatives. And, and I love that, the sort of leaving us with uh, that thought nugget about how do we tell valuable, meaningful stories, particularly as young African creators. Uh, that was Vuyo Jobuda, who is a Jobuda. media personality producer and director. Hi. And she's out in New York now. She called me. But uh, she'll forever be a South African. Made in SA. That was it for today.